Greetings, valued listeners, and welcome to our annual broadcast, Downtown Fresno, A Tale of Triumph. Today, we celebrate the remarkable journey of Downtown Fresno, a journey marked by dedication, innovation, and community. Imagine, if you will, a Fresno where every street, every brick, and every corner tells a story. It is a story of a revival led by the guardians of our urban landscape, the dedicated ambassadors. Their commitment to a clean, safe city virtually turned the tide. With security patrols from dusk till dawn, these ambassadors responded to 595 graffiti incidents and over two dozen individuals in need of critical assistance. These heroic efforts began lighting the way for a brighter downtown. Enter the Fresno Hop Trolley, our city's modern steed bridging neighborhoods and patronage. From the bustling corridors of Fresno State to the historic Tower District, Fresno City College, and right into the vibrant core of downtown. Ten local businesses have since partnered with the Fresno Hop Trolley, breathing life into the Trolley Coupon Program for locals to discover downtown Fresno's treasures. As dusk embraces the city, witness downtown's transformation. Facade improvements, a labor of love and vision, brought to light the architectural grandeur of our buildings. A spectacle of renewal, these projects valued at $200,000 have redefined our skyline, blending history with the promise of tomorrow. In 2023, an estimated 142,000 unique visitors dressed up to the nines for Art Hop, 716,000 unique visitors to Fulton Four, and Market on Kern saw 5,400 visitors overall. Now that's a lot of veggies. The air was alive with the sounds from vibrant dining spots and bars, especially during those electric Grizzlies home games. These gatherings and more brought 1.7 million unique visitors to downtown Fresno this year, showcasing Fresno's cultural richness, unity, and resilience. As we draw the curtain on our tale today, remember the essence of downtown Fresno lies not just in the streets and buildings, but in the heartbeat of its people. Every step taken in revitalization Every mural painted and every light strung for the holidays adds to what we can achieve together in partnership. This tale of triumph is yours, Fresno. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, guests and dear, dear friends, welcome to the beautiful Warner's Theater home of tonight's State of Downtown. My name is Ray Ortiz and I have the honor of being your host for tonight once again. I've done it for a couple years now and I'm very, very uh, honored to be asked back. Um, many of you may know me in my time with the Fresno Grizzlies and I am happy to share with you tonight that I'm actually celebrating my 19th year with the Fresno Grizzlies organization this year. Thank you so much. Uh, most recently, I've co-spirited the amazing, the amazing, the delicious food truck scene with my great partner and friend Mike Oz and our amazing team at Fresno Street Eats as well, which ironically got its humble beginnings here in downtown Fresno, ladies and gentlemen. All of that excitement, it's been such a journey with the Grizzlies, with Fresno Street Eats, and it, to see the vibrancy of our community come together and build and support those companies and businesses, likewise, is just an amazing, amazing journey. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we celebrate here tonight at the State of Downtown. How about a round of applause for that, ladies and gentlemen? First and foremost, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to our sponsors because without their generous support, tonight's event 
would not be possible. We are truly fortunate to have some uh, diverse and array partners, uh, each playing a pivotal role in uh, tonight's evening. Uh, a big round of applause for our marquee sponsor, Hawk Tower, ladies and gentlemen. Our producer sponsors are Central Valley Community Foundation, Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation, Mid-Valley Disposal, Axe Plus Capital, and the California High Speed Rail, also been very instrumental in shaping tonight's festivities. A round of applause for our producer sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. We are equally grateful for our director sponsorship, including Fresno County EDC, Kepler Neighborhood Schools, Pacific Southwest Building, uh, CMAC, who is running all the audio and stuff here tonight, uh, plus a Warner's Theater, uh, Stantec, ladies and gentlemen, Coleman and Horowitz, uh, Arkin St uh, Strategies, Fresno Housing Authority, uh, Precision Civil Engineering, Los Panchos, uh, Stump and Company Real Estate, Fresno Unified School District, Valley First Credit Union, State Center Community Dist or College District, and Civic Center Square, all each of those doing a generous contribution to make tonight possible. How about a round of applause for all of our sponsors on there too, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. It is now my, uh, my, my privilege to uh, take a moment and spotlight one of our esteemed sponsors, Danny Bernstein. Danny is the founder and general partner of Hawk Tower. Hawk Tower is an early stage venture capital firm focused on under leveraged California. They invest in a scalable early stage technology companies and address real world opportunities and imperatives outside the traditional entrepreneurial pattern and investment behaviors. Prior to Hawk Tower, Danny spent 20 years in Silicon Valley holding executive roles with Google and Microsoft. Danny successfully sold Mebo, a Sequoia Capital-backed web 2.0 startup to Google back in 2012. At Google, he ran business development, strategic partnerships, and developer programs for products like Google Search, Google Assist, Google Research, Chrome Web Platform, Google Identity and Sign-In, Firebase, and other products. And at Microsoft, he led critical product lines for Microsoft Teams. Danny literally worked on everything we use today, every day, right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dan Danny is an alumni of UC Davis and Stanford's Graduate School of Business. He lives in Monterey County with his wife, his kids, and his very, very beautiful puppy, River. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to uh, bring to the stage Mr. Danny Bernstein. Hey everybody, nice to meet you. I cannot match the dulcet tones of Ray Ortiz. That's pretty impressive. But uh, it's nice to meet everybody today. And I'm humbled to be here, honestly. Um, this is an amazing city with, I think, exceptional energy and optimism. And a little closer, like that? Right way. Way closer? Better? Okay, sounds good. Um, so we are sponsoring the state of downtown Fresno to introduce ourselves because we, as a new venture capital firm, are optimistic about the future of California, the future of the Central Valley, and then, of course, the critical role that Fresno plays in that ecosystem. This is a growing population. It's a young population. We have extraordinary universities here, like Fresno State University uh, and UC Merced, great community colleges, great nonprofits, and things like that. So I'm optimistic. I'm not an optimistic person. Sometimes my kids tell me I'm too optimistic and they get annoyed with that. Um, but I'm here today to talk about some of those things. See here, oh, there we go. Perfect. So let's talk about innovation outside of places like San Francisco, outside of places like Los Angeles. And there's an extraordinary amount of opportunity when you're in a place like San Francisco, you're going to think about, how do I make mobile games better? How do I make the last mile of food delivery better? How do I build another you know, search product? But when you're out in a place like Fresno, you think about different problems. And you can argue that you think about more important problems. You think about, this is a place that feeds the world. It's the number one producing, food producing county in the entire world. 
And so you think about a different set of problems. And so us as investors, we're excited about those sorts of opportunities. There's also other things happening here. There's an exceptional amount of coordination that's occurring. And this is something that as we've gotten to know this area that we've been able to plug into. We've gotten to know organizations like the Central Valley Community Foundation. We're members of the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. We met Cassandra Little, and we've met uh, a bunch of others. And we're excited to kind of continue to understand more and more about the opportunities here. But there's a challenge, and the challenge is that for all of California's venture capital, less than 1% of California's venture capital comes to Central California. And that includes Fresno, Monterey, Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, et cetera. A very, very, very small percentage of the venture capital actually comes here. And as a result of that, we're not creating startups, and as a result of that, we're not creating enough jobs. So the question then is, how do we, how do we change that? And so this is a representative idea. Obviously, we have extraordinary assets here with things like agriculture, with food production, with manufacturing. And in New York City, when you have the production side, you also have incredible technology. You have financial services, they call it FinTech. You also have advertising technology in a place like New York City because you have the publishers there. And so we obviously have amazing opportunities in a place like Fresno around agricultural technology, food technology, and climate technology. So we've begun to identify these things. We've begun to talk to people at UC Merced, at Fresno State, and other organizations, and begun to think about what are the kinds of companies that we create? What are the sorts of lean startup opportunities that exist in a place like this? And we're very optimistic. We think that this is actually a golden age of startup formation in places like Fresno. The, the approach that we take is we work closely with community organizations, with non-governmental organizations, as well as with universities and industry to help companies form. And we want to do this really quickly. If anyone knows me, there's a, there, there, there's a certain sort of like passion and energy that I bring to things like this. We want to make these things happen fast. So the kinds of things we'll be doing is looking for incredible entrepreneurs who can build great companies here. So these are just a couple of examples of stories I wanted to highlight. One of them is a company called Agriful. This is a very young company. They're actually less than one year old. But the CEO is from Bakersfield. He worked in San Francisco for a while, and he's in the process of coming back to build Agriful in the Central Valley. Another interesting example is a company that we invested in called FarmNG. FarmNG is actually some Silicon Valley founders who said, you know what, outside of Silicon Valley would be a better place to solve these problems. Blue White Robotics is an Israeli company that decided that its US headquarters should be in Fresno. And so you kind of see these sorts of stories and exciting patterns. And our belief is that more and more of this will happen over time. That's it. So I wanted just to kind of introduce ourselves, uh, say thank you for having us, and, and just genuinely appreciate that you've you know, welcomed us with open arms, and we're excited to get to know more people in the community. Reach out to us. We actually launched our website today at hawktower.com. I'm easy to find. Thank you so much. When I first locked eyes with downtown Fresno, it was purely love at first sight. There's no other place like it in town. I mean, personally for me, it's my, it's my favorite area. You know, it's got history. It's got a feel you can't replicate. But what's interesting about downtown Fresno is it is a non-homogenous community. We all look different. We're different shapes, we're different sizes, we're different skin colors, we have different values. And yet still we have commonality of and I believe this is really important, of needing and wanting and fostering human connection. And to see how far it's come in a couple of decades is, is farther than I could have imagined. You can't have a short-term vision and expect immediate results inside of a downtown environment. The best advice I could probably say is start small. You know, don't, don't get in over your head, start small. 
It is really hard to get something like a bar off the ground if you've never done it before. It is really hard to get something like a tea lounge off the, off the ground if you've never done that before. And, but Reza, myself, we've done these kinds of things. We have the expertise and we have the connections. So to that end, we can work like a hand in glove with our tenants to be able to help them realize their dreams. It takes a lot of people to, to bring something together and over time you realize how many people that takes. To facilitate that, you have to have the core belief that it is actually going to manifest and, and, and work. There was one thing that was really important for Reza and I to be able to pull off what's happening right now at Sun Stereo, and that is patience. I'm thankful, but I, I love what I do. So, you know, I'd, I'd say thank you, but I just wanna keep doing what I do, right? For me, for Reza, Receiving the award is an acknowledgement of what has happened, but it isn't our award. It is quite literally, as I've said many times, the community's award. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to uh, recognize the uh, recipients of the Build It Award. Uh, but before we do that, I want to uh, also extend an invitation to all of our council members that are here tonight. Would you please come up to the stage if you are a council member and you're here, come on up to the stage for me right now. Either stare there or stare there uh, while you're coming up. Uh, you know, the, I invite the tenants of Sun Stereo Warehouse along with the council members to come forward. A big round of applause for Sun Stereo, ladies and gentlemen. Kudos to Jamin Brazil, Reza Semi, and all the Sun Stereo tenants for their outstanding contributions building a better future here for our community, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, any elected officials, uh, if you guys are here, come on up. And again, the team from Sun Stereo Warehouse, come on up. So ladies and gentlemen, about round, big round of applause for the uh, Build It uh, Awardee after Build It, uh, Sun Stereo Warehouse, the Build It Award presented here by all of our elected officials. Also, uh, big round of applause for everything uh, that, they did, that they have done here for us. Uh, again, big shout out to kudos to Jamin and Reza for the uh, Sun Stereo Award after uh, Sun Stereo Warehouse, the Build It Award, ladies and gentlemen. A big round of applause, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. You can stay there with me. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here accepting this award on behalf of Sun Stereo Warehouse. It's truly an honor to represent our vibrant community of entrepreneurs who call our space home. Um, Sun Stereo Warehouse may not sell records or make music, but, we, but let me tell you the energy and creative buzzing within these walls could rival any rock concert from artisanal crafts to cutting edge tech startups. Our tenants are the heartbeat of downtown Fresno and I couldn't be prouder to stand among them. I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to our incredible tenants for choosing Sun Stereo Warehouse for their home. We have Parsec Education representing, um, Aerial Space, Downtown Collective, Data Path is out there, Fresno Land, um, Alexis from Von Wellis Bookkeeping um, are all here with us tonight. Your ingenuity and entrepreneurial spirit inspires us all. And to the downtown Fresno community, thank you all for unwavering support and the belief in the potential of this vibrant district. Together, we're not building businesses, we're building a legacy that will endure for generations to come. So here's to Sun Stereo Warehouse, where every day feels like a new verse in an epic ballad of innovation and possibility. Thank you for this incredible honor, and let's continue to build the next chapter of downtown Fresno's success story together. Thank you. Most downtowns are the heartbeat of the city. It's where most cities get their culture and their foundation of what makes that city unique. And we wanted to be a part of that. We wanted to make sure that that had life. I think it's important to sort of get people excited about these things. And, you know, I have friends who 
don't come downtown very often, but they come to the Fresh Jazz Fest or they come to a street eats event that has, you know, one of our themed nights at Tioga. I think sometimes you got to show them, like, hey, these are these cool things that are only happening in in downtown Fresno. You know, I love what Fresh Jazz Fest is, but I wish there was a Fresh Jazz Fest every month. Fresh Jazz and and events like Art Hop, I mean, they they are the draw. They are the reason why people come downtown, and it's it's something unique and different that they can't get in other parts of of the community. But it wasn't until uh, we actually started doing events within the community that we realized this is worth doing daily and creating an atmosphere, a community uh, that we, we now call the Tioga Beer Garden. It's definitely rewarding to show, to see that like the things, the efforts that we put in, it's being recognized, but I think more proud than anything. Winning the award, I think I, I look at it more for like Fresh Jazz Fest as a whole and kind of what it means to the community. I'm proud that we are able to, you know, have an event that reflects that and has grown to the point that it warrants something like this. So I think it signifies kind of where we've come in, in 10 years in downtown Fresno. Ladies and gentlemen, I now welcome to the stage the two companies, Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company and uh, Fresno Street Eats, and all of you that are here tonight that were involved with Fresh Yes, please come up to the stage here to accept your award. So come on up, ladies and gentlemen. A big round of applause, Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company and Fresno Street Eats. It's not just a single effort. Mike and Mike, the guys I work with, that have the same name. One of them I really like. The other one, eh, I'm not sure about yet. Uh, but uh, they're, they're all up here, and they are accepting the Activate Award here, ladies and gentlemen, from our esteemed uh, members here, Jerry and Dr. Joaquim Arambula and our city council. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company, Fresno Street Eats, and Fres Yes Fest. It is definitely a team effort here, ladies and gentlemen, representing from both companies, Fresno Street Eats and Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Once again, a big round of applause. Fres Yes Fest, the Activate It Award. Thank you so much. Mike or Mike? I think I'm just gonna say thank you on behalf of me and Mike and our team. You know, we're, we're super happy to be recognized for this. It's a lot of work and effort between multiple teams and uh, not just us, but the vendors to the, the artists that participate and the food trucks and everyone that's involved, it's a big deal and we're, we're super happy to be recognized and super happy to see what's come of Fresh Yes, not just after the event, but everything that surrounds it. So we just wanna say thank you. Mike and I are proud to accept this award. Most <laughs> hey, <laughs> all right, hey, good evening, y'all. Y'all having a good evening? Having some fun? I'm Elliot Balch, President and CEO of the Downtown Fresno Partnership. It is my great privilege to add to the welcome to this wonderful event. In case you hadn't noticed, the state of downtown is a time when our community shows its pride to the max. And we take great pride at the Downtown Fresno Partnership in being part of it. Uh, and I want to thank all of our awardees and congratulations again. Thank you for helping us recognize the amazing things that they've done. Uh, you know, it can be... Uh, it, it's not just one or two individuals. It's the entire community that comes around that's made possible by these projects that is so special in our downtown. And, you know, it could be intimidating if you're thinking about the thing that you want to start to see what success has grown up. But the reality is take the opposite message because small things can get big. And you're surrounded by a community of folks who want to support your success. So that's a message to all, uh, all the doers in the room, which there are many in this room. Thank you. I want to um, thank our, um, uh, our sponsors this evening. We're so privileged uh, to have 
Danny with us from Hawk Tower. And to hear some of the vision um, really about the valley. But what's special about that is that downtown's got a role, an important role in the future of the valley. And so uh, we thank Hawk Tower. We thank our wonderful producer sponsors, as was mentioned, Access Plus Capital, which is ensuring that capital is not a barrier to success in Central California. And downtown, focused on an equitable pathway from startup to small business to even property owner and builder. Am I right? to the California High Speed Rail Authority, uh, really creating a new front door for Fresno. This, this region steps away from right here. Our friends at Mid-Valley Disposal are, are passionate, creative, expert partners in serving businesses throughout our downtown. Am I right? To Confia, the expanding Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation, de verdad si confiamos en ustedes, on all kinds of joint ventures and adventures. As you say, let's go and the Central Valley Community Foundation. So, still family, still family, and driving investment in a just and thriving Central Valley, including right here in downtown Fresno. Uh, and all of our sponsors, and just to, again, thank Fresno County EDC, Kepler Neighborhood School, Pacific Southwest Building, CMAC, Stantec, Coleman and Horowitz, Arkin Strategies, Fresno Housing, Precision Civil Engineering, Stumpf and Company, Fresno Unified School District, Valley First Credit Union, State Center Community College District, Civic Center Square, and we're pleased to spotlight a row of friends from the Rotary Club of Fresno, Bay Valley Tech Coding Academy, and I would be remiss not to acknowledge the Oaxacan Old Fashioned at Los Panchos Mexican Restaurant, available later this evening, right here in downtown Fresno. There's so much I could say about every single one of our sponsors. It's kind of a, like a tsunami of amazingness uh, all together. And what's common across, there's this dedica dedication to excellence. There's a, a shaping of the future while also addressing issues of today. Um, and infusing new lifeblood directly into our downtown with so many of our sponsors. So it's pretty, spe it's pretty special to have this coalition together. Please help me thank again our sponsors for this evening. We are fortunate to have some of our downtown Fresno partnership directors, board of directors in the house. If you're here, please stand and be recognized. We want to cheer you on because you have a very important role in the work of our organization. Thank you. Thank you. Need all the love and encouragement. <laughs> Uh, and want to uh, recognize our amazing Downtown Fresno Partnership staff team. Hello. <laughs> making, making all of this possible. And when I, I say all of it, I mean every day of every week, all year long. In the last month or so, we've tripled our head count. Well, what's that about? That's thanks to a partnership with the City of Fresno through the One Fresno Youth Job Corps. We've got some of our ambassadors who are in the house. In fact, not only some of our own new ambassadors, but some of the interns, participants, ambassadors from other locations, the city itself, CMAC, Pavarello House, EOC, Career Nexus, Neighborhood Industries. So if, if you're one of the ambassadors, if you're part of the Youth Job Corps program, raise a holler. Where are you at? Woohoo! a heck of a team. Now, speaking of our One Fresno Youth Job Corps ambassadors, did you know we've created a page on our website where you can book our Downtown Fresno Partnership team for your next public event in downtown or Chinatown? Uh, you see how well our team's been running every, all parts of this event? Well, we can, we can make that magic happen for you, too. So give us a holler. We want to share this amazing resource. You if, you, if you need a reference, just ask the 10 fruitless olive trees that are planted in city planters outside this very building. That's that picture. Or just ask our friends over at the Black Wellness and Prosperity Center, whom our team just helped celebrate Black Maternal Health Week in downtown Fresno last weekend. Seriously, we've got a forum. Sign us up. Um, it's all part of our bedrock services, and um, there's so many important things that we do day in, day out, week in, week out at the Downtown Fresno Partnership. In 2023, just in the marketing and business 
development front, our website reached 360,000 users. Our social media reached over 700,000 people. We saw 28% year-over-year growth on Facebook, 100% year-over-year growth on Instagram. We somehow, and I do not continue to not understand how this is possible, published 190 positive business stories throughout the year. And we helped with facade improvements totaling $200,000, as you saw. Clean and safe, when we say 595 graffiti incident responses last year, you need to know that was the core three folks who are then our ambassadors, right? That has now grown to expand to so many. Plus 100, I'm sorry, 1,800 additional incidents that our contract security replied to. And on events, 47,000 people total attended the 30 event days that we held last year. We saw year over year increases in a turnout, in dwell time, and I think the part of that that I'm proudest of is we did 30 events, but we helped other people do 35 events. So we're leveraging that resource. Now, speaking of visitors, I was starting to throw some stats at you, and you're like, well, how do you know? Well, turns out we've got a new tool called placer.ai. We're up in our game on data. And here's just another sample. So you can see, we can give counts on the Fulton, Fulton Street, the area, all of downtown. We can track that year over year. We can tell you that within a block of Fulton, last year, 2.3 million people showed up, 700,000 or so unique visitors. We know the peak hour of visiting the core of our downtown was 8 p.m. last year. We know the peak day was Saturday. We know the most households of any range was in the 75 to $100,000 range of household income. We know that demographically it resembles our region with 58% Hispanic and a median age of 31. We know that the median distance folks came was five miles, and 90% of people came with, from 30 miles or less. Pretty cool, right? You, gotta, you, gotta, you can't manage what you can't uh, measure. And we get pretty busy, as you can tell, doing things and measuring them. And it's easy to miss the longer term, bigger picture. And also because, as humans, we're wired to constantly be resetting what we think is normal as what we're experiencing today. But not to fall into that trap, always good to remember things that weren't a thing 10 years ago. Because we've seen change. In the brewery district, for example, which didn't exist 10 years ago. But now we know from Placer that 2,500 people are in the brewery district every Friday and Saturday after 5 p.m. We know that on Fulton Street, on our hot nights, there's 15,000 people or so every first Thursday of the month. We know there's two dozen breweries, restaurants, and bars open for Grizzlies home games. And we know from city data that the conversion of Fulton Mall to Street uh, led to a 14x increase in taxable sales. And sometimes, sometimes I find myself reminding folks who we all want to continue to see improvement, uh, but not in the sense of change cannot happen, because change ha can happen. Change has happened, and change is happening. But not just change that you can touch, taste, and feel, but also 10 years of systemic change, and this is important to me as well. So 10 years ago was give or take, about February 27th, 2014, which was the date the city council voted to approve the Fulton Street project. So 10 years is an important milestone. That's, for me, that was sort of the capstone of my time at the city. So I can remember things that were happening then and in the years leading up and compare with what we're dealing with today. So one thing that's different today is there's so much more capacity in the community. I mentioned how we're leveraging uh, our events uh, capacity for others to help others do more events. It was the case 10, 15 or so years ago, whenever the downtown association, downtown partnership would do an event, merchants would complain. It wouldn't be a benefit. But today, events we do, we're working with folks, merchants, and those are some of the best, strongest sales days of their entire year. We bring businesses together to partner and co-host events with us, and we can hardly finish a sentence about the idea when they're taking over to talk to each other and make the idea their own. It's pretty magical. And of course, I mentioned helping our event entrepreneurs, those independent event organizers, do most of the events that happen downtown. Our partnerships are stronger. 
uh, which has led to leveraged resources. So for example, sometimes, sometimes, our relationship with the city was like a lot of squabbling. And the reality is, well, and it's important to say, there are times that we're gonna be advocates, right? That doesn't go away. But there's so much that we can do together to grow the pie. And whether that's with ambassadors or whether it's with the ice rink that's coming back to our downtown this winter. The big things, the important things have us working together and that's pretty magical. Uh, and it also means that, for example, in this year's budget for the downtown partnership, every $3 of PBID is matched with another $2 of money from other sources. So those dollars are very precious because they, they should, they're the kindling, right? And we're growing the flame that comes from it. We see investment now at a greater scale, like by far. I can remember we had the Secretary of Transportation out from Washington in 20, 2013 to announce a $16 million grant for the Fulton Street Project. Some of you probably were there. And today, and the mayor will talk more about, a $293 million commitment that we have from the state, California, working with our legislators, some of whom are here. It's beyond an order of magnitude greater. And it's, and it's truly amazing. So I think back on that moment, there's one more dimension, which is thinking back to 2014 and on February 27th, I believe carried the day. Remember that? We rejected not believing. We rejected giving up. We rejected choosing to do nothing. Today, we still believe in downtown, am I right? Today, we still believe in downtown. And we also know that the future of our valley is downtown Fresno because we're, downtown is how we adapt to a future with zero net growth, which is projected. It's the place where we can emit the least carbon per capita in our future in a changing climate. It's where we create, through the change process, we create opportunity uh, to help folks with upward economic mobility that breaks concentrated poverty in our region. We move our region up the export value chain. That's really what Danny's talking about, is how do we export things that have ever higher value and create ever better jobs. And we bring humans, we bring all of us together, and that's important in a world that's automated, where the remote work takes over. So downtown is delivering on all of this, and it's not just our opportunity downtown, it's our responsibility. And so that's pretty special in our day and age. And when I say our opportunity and our responsibility, that transformation is really about live, work, and play. Last year when we talked about downtown all day, it's the idea that in a single day, any of us could be a resident, and a worker, and a customer all at once. And so it's, a, it's not just a slogan, it's a strategy. Whoops, stay tuned for that. Uh, it's a strategy of live, work, and play that's mixed, and it's mutually reinforcing. And it, creates inclusive opportunity all over. Uh, and what's amazing is the leverage. So, and the mayor will talk more, I'm not gonna go into depth, but you think about the investment of state resources and infrastructure to produce housing that by my estimate is like at least seven X in investment. You think about the state and federal resources that have come in for, to support ag tech research and commercialization, what that can mean for the valley. It's probably like a 10x ROI at least. You think about where we are in terms of those taxable sales, but we could easily grow that by a factor of three starting with what we got. So downtown, is, it's all about leveraging resources. And the downtown partnership is far from the only factor in that. But it's pretty cool that our work does help shape that future and just on a budget of less than a million dollars a year in assessments. Um, so the last thing I'll say uh, is if you are interested in learning more about that, about live, work, and play, how that's a strategy, how we're shaping the future, how the city is leading uh, the, the change, and we are working with them on all of the above, I want you to take a close look and train your phone on that QR code, because live now is the relaunch, very proud to announce, of the Downtown Fresno Academy. You can be... This is very exciting. You can, you can become an expert and a participant in how change is made, how change is happening. Um, that's under the leadership of the Downtown Fresno Foundation. 
Downtown Fresno Foundation board members in the house. We're introducing, this is the 11th cohort. There have been 10 cohorts of the Downtown Academy. Uh, it's a 10 month program connecting leaders with forward thinkers to explore downtown Fresno's past, present, and future. So it's perfect for anyone from a young professional in downtown to a downtown resident, anyone passionate about getting involved. Uh, and so we'll host an informational mixer in May. Stay tuned for information about that on social media. Uh, the cost is $500. We will be offering scholarship support on the basis of need and the availability of funds. So I'm going to put in a plug for any potential sponsors, grantors, donors. Please see us. This is a very important and very exciting uh, program for engaging. And how many of you in the audience, let's see, are Downtown Academy alumni? Boom. Yep, so we're growing the circle of folks who are knowledgeable, informed, it's very, very, very exciting and timely. And with that, I'd like to um, transition to welcoming our keynote speaker for this evening. Truly a leader for our times in downtown, just reelected with 80% of the vote, and, but already leaving a legacy. Uh, and he is the reason, working with our legislators, that we have seen hundreds of millions of dollars being invested in infrastructure that leads to development. It's changing all the conversations, I can just tell you. So I'm very excited that we hear now from our mayor, Jerry Dyer. Great cities have great downtowns. In Fresno, we are well on our way. Downtown Fresno is a place where you can live, work, and play but we're just getting started. We're paving the way for some new infrastructure downtown and in Chinatown. In fact, we are so excited about it, we even created a brand new department to make it a reality. We're working with the backbone of downtown, our business owners, helping them improve the appearance of their stores and buildings. Together, we're poised to take Fresno to the next level, bringing in new businesses, new housing opportunities, new hotels, and so much more. There's a buzz around downtown Fresno like never before. Fresno hop trolleys are providing safe, free transportation, bringing new life to our city's core. Our city crews are working hard, making sure the streets are clean every single day as part of our beautification efforts. And our downtown ambassadors are putting a smiling, welcoming face on our city center. Plus, we're learning best practices from thriving downtowns around the globe, bringing those ideas back home. And working hard to reconnect the communities of downtown Fresno and Chinatown. But all that is just the beginning. Because great cities have great downtowns. And for our downtown, the best is yet to come. And thank you to all of you for the work you're doing to make our downtown the best place to live, work, and play. Thank you, uh, Elliot. That uh, right there gets me so excited and so um, jazzed about downtown Fresno. And uh, I know all of you are here because you too are excited about the rebirth uh, and the revitalization that we are seeing in not only our downtown, but our Chinatown area. And I want you to know, this is our time. This is our time for revitalization. How many of you believe that downtown Fresno is coming back? How many of you believe that? I mean, really believe that. I believe it with every core of my being that downtown Fresno is coming back. And let me start out and, and say thank you to some folks uh, for why it's coming back. Because uh, there's a lot of people that care. And I want to start out with Elliot Balch and our board members from the Downtown Partnership. Thank you for your leadership, Elliot. Thank you for the board. I want to thank my team, my city manager, George Ann White, my chief of staff, Kelly Furtado, who single-handedly landed the $43.7 million grant from the state. communications team that does so much every single week to market our businesses downtown and continue to make people feel welcome. Uh, Santaya Rose, uh, uh, Brandon Johansson, and Fabiola Ramirez. And uh, Miss Downtown, uh, Jordan Sanchez, thank you for doing what you're doing for downtown and believing in it and living downtown and having your gelato uh, store downtown as well. 
Lupe Perez for all that you've done. Randall Morrison from our capital projects. He is the guy that is really making things happen in a very timely fashion. I'll talk a little bit more about that as well as Scott Mosier. And then our city council. I can tell you right now, mayor can do nothing in the city unless they have the support of the city council. So thank you. I know uh, Annalisa Perea is here, our council president. Mike Carbassi, thank you for your support. Others could not be here, but I want to say thank you to each and every one of them. And uh, our Central Valley Community Foundation under the leadership of Ashley Swearingen, thank you for all that you do uh, out in the open as well as behind the scene. Uh, Assembly Member Dr. Joaquina Rambula, thank you for carrying the torch for us on the 293 million, the 250. And, um, and also, I know she couldn't be with us, but uh, Senator Caballero, huge help. And uh, I wanna say a, a special shout out uh, to somebody who gave me a shout out yesterday, yesterday, so I'm gonna return it. And that's Governor Newsom for believing in downtown. So thank you to all of you folks. Give me yourself a round of applause. You've heard me say many times, Great cities have great downtowns. And if you want to claim to be a great city, you better have a great downtown. And I'm telling you, we are well on our way to having a great downtown. And if you look around the nation, from New York to Chicago, Boston to San Diego, these cities are defined by their downtown. It is not only their economic hub, it is what defines them. Their skyline, landmarks, historic buildings, all of those things are what make a downtown. These are places where people come together to live, to do business, to eat, and to be entertained. And that is exactly what we are working to achieve in Fresno, a downtown where people can live, work, and play. And as part of my One Fresno vision, this is what we seek, an inclusive, prosperous, beautiful city where people take pride in their neighborhood and their community. And that includes downtown, Fresno, and Chinatown. So what is the secret sauce for having a great downtown? Everybody's got to have a secret sauce. And one ingredient is having a concentration of government buildings in the heart of downtown, a city hall, state and federal courthouses, educational law enforcement buildings, uh, just to name a few. This creates foot traffic from 8 to 5 that serves to stimulate restaurants with lunch crowds that downtown businesses, quite frankly, depend on. And we have done that, I believe, very well in Fresno. But vibrant downtowns, vibrant downtowns cannot survive on an eight to five population. There must be nightlife that includes dinner establishments, art venues, theaters, bars, hotels, and nightclubs, retail, and of course, a thriving brewery district, which we have. Yes, you can clap for our brewery district. So where do these patrons come from? Although we would love to see them come from throughout the city, the reality is there are far too many restaurants, bars, and shopping venues in their own neighborhoods for them to sometimes venture beyond. That is one of the many byproducts of urban sprawl, which we saw in Fresno. Instead of building your city from the inside out, we must now rebuild from the outside in. And this is exactly what we must do in order to create our own customer base for downtown Fresno. As one prominent restaurant owner said recently when I asked if he would consider bringing his restaurant downtown, and it is prominent, he replied, give me 30,000 rooftops and I will come. 30,000 rooftops. Fortunately, the demand to live downtown is very high, which includes those under 40, government and hospital employees, and those who seek to be a part of a downtown vibe. Can we support 30,000 people living downtown, or even 10,000 people living downtown? Not with our current water and sewer infrastructure that we have. Infrastructure that in some cases is well over 100 years old and the limited availability of parking that we have downtown. So this is where we must begin. Thanks to nearly $300 million investment from the state of California. Yes, please applaud. Never before, 293.7 million, but who's counting? 
Our uh, aged water and sewer mains will be replaced in our downtown and Chinatown areas beginning from Van Ness to Freeway 99 in Chinatown and Ventura to Tuolumne. That is what we refer to as the catalytic development area. That is the area that we are going to expand on and then build out from there. The design work for the underground infrastructure was recently completed, allowing for construction to begin in June of 24. That's when we're going to award a con construction contract. Construction will begin shortly thereafter, and construction for all of our water and sewer mains and much, much of our other infrastructure will be done by the end of 2025. As you saw in the video, an entirely new capital projects department was created this fiscal year in order to facilitate this project and many others currently underway in the city, some $2 billion of infrastructure projects that we have in the city. And we created a team with over 140 employees. For the last six months of my, uh, my administration has held weekly meetings to advance this work and coordinate our efforts with outside entities such as High Speed Rail, PG&E, and, and the Downtown Partnership, transit agencies, and others. And I want you to know it is my commitment to make sure we work with PG&E to underground every above-ground electrical wire in downtown Fresno. And I must apologize in advance for the, the, uh, the detours and the delays this construction will cause, uh, but we cannot move forward without it. And I know you've all experienced a lot of delays and detours already as a result of high-speed rail, uh, but those are close to having those streets all completed uh, with all of the great separations that have done, been done, some 11 of them in our city. So please be patient over the next year. And as you already know, downtown revitalization is much, much more than just enhancing infrastructure. On November 2nd, we launched the Fresno Hop, a free trolley service that runs every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Three trolleys travel through the Brewery District, Cultural Arts District, Tower District, Fresno City College, and Campus Point at Fresno State. Every week we are attracting more and more young people to downtown with the hope they will not only be our future downtown residents, but our future patrons of downtown Fresno. Plus. We don't let them get behind the wheel of a car and drive after they've been to our brewery district. We give them a safe ride home, free. And I'm, uh, I'm extremely confident that over time, riderships will increase, especially in the warmer months, uh, exposing more people to our uh, vibrant downtown nightlife. And if you have not heard, the Mariposa Plaza, which is a premier public space for downtown residents and visitors is undergoing a $4 million makeover. That's on top of the 293.7. This facelift will include new trees, two performance stages, shade structures, and the electrical capacity to accommodate a downtown ice rink every single year during the Christmas holiday season. That plaza is situated strategically only one block from the future high-speed rail station. The first high-speed rail station in the nation is being built in downtown Fresno. <laughs> Although the plaza will not be finished in time this year, at least the electrical part, to house an ice rink, we are working closely with the downtown partnership on a temporary ice rink, rink in, down, in the downtown area nearby Mariposa Mall. Um, and I am confident that uh, it will be in place well in advance of the holiday season, the shopping season, and I'm optimistic we're going to be able to work through those details with my team. Let me transition. I have heard complaints uh, for many years, even during my time in law enforcement, about the unsheltered population uh, rifling through the alley dumpsters for recyclables, resulting in trash being strewn about our downtown area. And I want all of you to know, we are committed to eliminating trash dumpsters in our downtown and Chinatown areas and replacing all of them with strategically placed tra trash compactors. This is being done in conjunction with our downtown infrastructure enhancement plan 
and it is my hope that that will be done over the next 24 months. No more trash cans downtown. And speaking of uh, keeping downtown clean, I'd like to pause for a moment and recognize all our downtown ambassadors who do a tremendous job picking up trash and removing graffiti on a daily basis. Please stand to be recognized. For those of you who don't know, we worked with the governor's office to get $7.4 million to fund an ambassador program. And we go out and we hire the hard to hire people in our community, many of those folks, uh, people who come from disadvantaged, underserved neighborhoods. Uh, we've hired 240 of them in the city of Fresno. And we pay for their, uh, not just their salaries out of that, we pay for their transportation, we pay for childcare, and we pay for clothing, and we're paying for the downtown ambassadors as well, and we will continue to do so. And I want you all to know that your efforts are not unnoticed, and they are very much appreciated in downtown Fresno, and downtown Fresno has never been cleaner. I also, a uh, special shout out, I don't think he's here, getting ready for tomorrow's big day, but Mark Standorf, who is my director of Beautify Fresno, which is an incredible movement in our city uh, that allows for volunteers to come out every week, three times a week generally, and to lock arms in neighborhoods they don't even live in and clean up our city. In fact, tomorrow we'll have over 1,500 volunteers in our city and well over 200 of those in the Chinatown and downtown areas. So a big shout out to Beautify Fresno and Mark Standorf. And those visiting downtown are taking notice. You know, we get used to downtown uh, because we're there every single day. But many of you may have seen a recent video of, a, of Fresno resulting from a, a visit that an individual had here on March 14th, him and his wife. Uh, this gentleman produces documentaries of U.S. cities, and, and he shared his observations of Fresno. And when he walked through downtown taking video, he said in quotes, it's just a clean, beautiful downtown. I haven't seen so much as a gum wrapper on the ground. It's quite beautiful. And you know what? We are working hard to make his perception an everyday reality. In fact, we have increased the frequency of pressure washing of sidewalks and have increased our graffiti removal efforts with the addition of a new graffiti crew and a bucket truck to reach those hard to reach locations. And thanks to our collaboration with the Downtown Partnership, you may have seen the recently relocated planter boxes outside the theater on your way in this evening. And all of this is just the beginning. And yes, I am well aware of the parking frustrations that many of you have. Parking, or the lack thereof, has always been an issue in downtown Fresno. But it's become more prevalent due to our growth, exponential growth. Parking for residents, those attending events, employees, and patrons, especially in the brewery district. Plans are currently underway to build a future large-scale parking structure at H and Inyo, across from the stadium, about 900 stalls, and aesthetically pleasing, as well as one at Fulton and Tuolumne. Again, these parking structures will not be your traditional parking structures. They will be aesthetically pleasing to the eye, and strategically located for convenience. They will accommodate future residents, those attending Art Hop or events at Chichancy Park, as well as those visiting the Brewery District or Cultural Arts District. Plans are also underway to spruce up the spiral garage on Van Ness. You may have already noticed we have doubled down on security by implementing 24-7 foot patrols and additional security guards from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. We've increased beautification efforts to include weekly power washing and daily sweeping, mopping, and trash removal. And soon, very soon, we hope to see new murals, fresh paint, and artwork throughout the garage as well. And this garage will be well activated in downtown Fresno. Okay, so what about more motel rooms? What about more hotel rooms? With tourism on the rise in downtown Fresno, and by the way, it is, 
Uh, won't we need more hotel rooms? And the answer is yes. Construction at the Courtyard Marriott, Marriott is well underway and will provide an additional 144 hotel rooms downtown next to the convention center. They are already on their third floor. The La Quinta Inn at Tellerian R Streets has a new owner who has made a significant investment into renovating the entire hotel both inside and out. The La Quinta, which is situated next to the recently developed Starbucks, is now serving a much broader clientele. And the Radisson Hotel on Van Ness has recently been purchased with plans to turn it into a high-end boutique hotel with a spa and fine dining. And I can assure you, I can assure you, the city will do all we can to accelerate this development. It has been sitting vacant far too long. Right, Savak? I know right where you're sitting. Savak is one of the new owners, and he's going to make that thing happen. He told me that over drinks last night, so I believe him. With all the rising costs and demands placed on small business these days, we know how difficult it is to make investments into their property. Thanks to a partnership with the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation and the Downtown Fresno Partnership, the city has provided $25,000 grants to small businesses for facade improvements. To date, we've improved the facades of 22 businesses in downtown and Chinatown with an investment of over $510,000. And if you're not a believer in them, just take a look at Los Panchos, Tres Hermanos, China Express, the Downtown Partnership, just to name a few. And just for the council's benefit, I am including another million dollars in facade improvement in the mayor's uh, proposed budget this year, so don't be surprised by that. And please don't take it out, right? Another million dollars. <laughs> and on the housing front, finishing touches are being made on the Hotel Fresno with 81, one, two, and three bedroom units of workforce housing being made available with 10,000 square foot of retail space on the ground floor yet to be developed. It's a beautiful, beautiful facility. Applications for those units are now being offered online. So if you want to live in the Fresno Hotel, now's your time. Architectural plans are also in the review process for the J.C. Penney's building to create 160 units. That's lofts, one and two bedroom units, all at market rate. And this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful development overlooking our Chichancy Stadium. Construction is slated to begin later this year with a completion date of late 25 or early 2026. I confirmed that with Will Dyke this afternoon. The magnificent Helm Building continues to move along with plans for 99 units, along with retail space on the ground floor. And I'm told that many of the retail spaces are spoken for through contractual commitments from prospective businesses. The mural lofts located at 1740 and 1744 Van Ness will be finished this summer, offering 28 residential units. 22 of those will be at market rate. Thank you, Reza Asimi, for your investment in downtown. <laughs> Ongoing investment. Future housing developments are on the horizon with groundbreakings in late 2025 or early 2026 at H and Inyo Streets as well as Fulton and Tuolumne Streets, where CVS Pharmacy is currently located and would be demolished um, as, as early as later this year. These sites will ultimately contain at least, at a minimum, 862 housing units, both affordable and market rate between the two. And in terms of entertainment and nightlife, I'm almost done. I'm excited to see that the owners and they're here tonight, of the Los Arcos nightclub have purchased the Luftenberg's building on Fulton Mall with plans to open a nightclub as well as indoor and outdoor dining to include rooftop dining downtown by the stadium. Thank you, Los Arcos. What a great location, perfectly situated in the heart of downtown. 
and we are currently working with the new owners to accelerate this development, which I am told could be open as soon as the first quarter of 2025, if not before. And what can we, yes, a round of applause for Los Arcos. And what can we say about the new and improved Chichancy Park with this fresh coat of paint and stadium renovations that includes last year's installation of state-of-the-art video scoreboard and speaker system as well as a new, as new turf. What a perfect time for the Grizzlies' new owners, Diamond Baseball Holdings, to invest in Fresno because we, as a city, have invested over $8 million in that stadium in the last three years, and it is absolutely beautiful. And as we know, it's not just hosting baseball. In fact, there are six concerts planned over the next six months uh, that each one will generate between 15 to 20,000 patrons. So we know we need to spruce up our stadium. Development plans have also been submitted and approved for a new bar with an outdoor patio area at 636 Van Ness. Congratulations to the team at McQueen's Bar. I know this has been a long time coming, and I can't wait for the ribbon cutting at McQueen's. So as you can see, our thriving downtown is undergoing a remarkable transformation and has experienced a renewed sense of vibrancy through infrastructure investments, trolleys, new housing opportunities, increased entertainment, cultural experiences, as well as improvements benefiting our local business. Recent trips to Mexicali to view their Chinatown revitalization efforts and a subsequent trip to Japan to view economic development surrounding high-speed rail made it perfectly clear to me how important our Chinatown revitalization efforts are to downtown. These two areas are complementary. Therefore, you cannot revitalize one without the other. This will be especially true once the nation's first high-speed rail station is constructed. Why? The connection between the two areas will be inseparable. The planned pedestrian bridge connecting high-speed rail to both Chinatown and downtown will serve as a destination point for travelers from throughout the state. And so, in closing, I want to say this. Thank you to all who share the common vision and goal for a thriving downtown and Chinatown and for helping to shape the future of Fresno. And remember, great cities have great downtowns and we are well on our way in Fresno to having a great downtown. Thank you and God bless you. Have a safe evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Jerry Tyre, big round of applause for my man. That's fantastic. Thank you, Mayor Dyer. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up tonight's uh, festivity, I want to extend a heartfelt uh, thank you to the Warner's Theater for having us here in this uh, beautiful, historic venue. Uh, we hope to see a lot of you back here very, very soon. Um, we ask you kindly if you had any trash or anything you brought in to kind of take that out with you. The receptacle's right outside the lobby. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you all once again for being part of this amazing night here tonight. Have a wonderful evening, and let's continue to build activate and celebrate our amazing, incredible community here in downtown Fresno, ladies and gentlemen. Good night.